Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is about six o'clock on Tuesday evening and Alex is on his way home. He stopped at Costco for some stuff and then he's texted me and said he was stopping at Chipotle and asked me if I wanted anything, but I'm not hungry. I am, um, I'm actually, I feel like I'm losing my voice and I filmed three videos earlier. I filmed a video on my drama channel, which is totally different than anything that I've ever done over there before. And then I filmed a haul of some t-shirts that I ordered, some really fun t-shirts that I got from this um, company called Swiss Embassy. And it's kind of like my Whitney Houston t-shirt, but I got some just like that. So anyway, and then I did a booktube video. I did a haul over on my booktube video channel. And um, I was gonna do a Peterisms video if I get done with this and I still have my voice. And uh, then I might turn around and do a booktube video. Uh, no, booktube, a Peterisms video. I might turn around and do a Peterisms video, but I don't know. I'm, I was texting Alex earlier and I was telling him that I was losing my voice. And he was like, does your throat hurt? And I was like, no, my throat doesn't hurt at all, but my voice kind of goes in and out. And um, I don't really know why. It's like very crackly. And like I woke up this morning and I was like talking to Boo Radley and it was like I almost didn't have any voice at all. And then I drank some coffee and I took him outside and stuff. And then my voice came back a little bit. And then I was like, okay, I'm just gonna film my drama video and a vlog. And then I filmed some more. And then when I got done and I filmed those videos and I was uploading them, my throat started to hurt a little bit. And I'm like, I hope I'm not getting sick. I really hope I'm not getting sick. Um. But no, I feel like my, uh, <laughs> I'm just losing my voice, I don't know. Which is not great because I have a therapy session tomorrow, a very important therapy session. We're doing like a big part of this um, trauma narrative. And so I have to do that tomorrow. And I was wanting to film a bunch of videos. So if I lose my voice, that is not conducive <laughs> to me having therapy tomorrow. And um, as well as doing some other videos for all my channels. So anyway, we'll just have to kind of play it by ear and see. I have actually filmed a vlog over here. I was looking. This is like my... I've like filmed a vlog every day in a row for a long time. Like I haven't taken a break and it's been like two or three weeks. So I'm trying to keep the momentum up. I'm trying to keep it going. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how well I do. Um, but unless I get horribly sick or I'm not feeling great, I don't plan on taking it taking a day off from vlogging. So anyway, um, other than that, I'm having a good day. It's beautiful in Indianapolis. I looked at the temperature and it was earlier, it was 68 degrees. I like came outside. Well, they've been working outside right around this corner. So I couldn't film any videos out here today. Um, but like Boo Radley was like running around. He was sniffing the air. He just loved it so much. And I was sitting out here earlier, you know, getting peaceful for the day and doing all my morning stuff and all that kind of stuff. I have like this nail that I like hit against the drawer last night. And I like, I need to cut it down real short so that it doesn't like split my nail. But anyway, um, it was beautiful. It's still beautiful out today. It's very, very sunny. And so anyway, it was 68 earlier. I was surprised. I thought it was supposed to be like mid 50s to low 60s. I didn't know it was supposed to be like 68. Um, but there's a cool breeze outside. It's nice. It's nice. Um, I might put on a sweatshirt and come out here and, uh, read a little bit, depending on how I feel. I'm also kind of feeling like maybe I need to take a little bit of a nap. I am having such a hard time falling asleep at night. Um, once I fall asleep, like I, I get good sleep, but I'm having a hard time falling asleep. And, and I was gonna say this morning, but it wasn't this morning when I woke up because I went to bed. Well, I didn't go to bed very, I went to bed late. I mean, late for most people, but not late for me. But then I just like tossed and turned and I couldn't fall asleep. My legs are starting to cramp again. Um, and that was what happened on the trazodone. So I don't know why that's happening now. But anyway, I lay in bed and like my legs start cramping and like I just can't get comfortable and I can't sleep. But when I do fall asleep, then I sleep deep. Um, but I pushed the snooze button several times today. <laughs> then I got up and I took Boo Radley out. And like I said, it was beautiful and stuff like that. So um, last night was a good night. Last night... Alex is watching some new show. He was like eating something and I did get Cheesecake Factory last night. I was like, just like, I want to get something like bad. This has not been a great week as far as the weight loss journey. Um, so tonight I am going to eat healthy though. But last night I got Cheesecake Factory. So it came and Alex was watching this new show on Hulu that he's watching. He is watching. It's with the girl that was in Jane the Virgin. 
It's called... She's, like, dating a guy that's dead or something like that. But he doesn't know he's dead. I don't know. Like, I caught, like, just moments of it. He likes it. He said it's really good. So, because he's like, I need a new show to watch. Is this him coming in right now? I think this is him. Oh, here he is. He just went like that. Um, but he's watching that show. And so he was, like, sitting on the chair watching the TV. And I had my AirPods on. I was, like, sitting on the couch eating. And I was watching, catching up on The Bachelor. I didn't watch last night's episode because I did. I don't like to watch it with commercials, even though I, I record it anyway or ads. So I watch it the next day when it comes out on Hulu without ads. So I'm going to watch that tonight. But I caught up last night, which was the first, well, it was, I guess it wasn't. I thought there was going to be, like, two different hometowns. It was interesting watching it. Because this is, like, the first time that I've ever watched the, like, real Bachelor or Bachelorette. On The Golden Bachelor, like, they extensively, like, met with their families during Hometowns. So, Hometowns is, like, he's narrowed it down to four women that are the final four. And then he does Hometowns, which is where they go to their hometown. And then he meets their family and gets to see where they're from and stuff like that. And then at the end of that episode, he picks three. And then those three go to, I thought it was Costa Rica, but they're going to Tulum this year, I guess. That was last night's episode. They went to Tulum and then they do this, the whole, the whole show. I'm going to do a whole video about it on my reality TV channel, but I want to catch up tonight. Once I get caught up with this week's episode, I'm going to do the video either tomorrow or Thursday about what I think about The Bachelor. The whole concept of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette is, like, so bizarre. I, to be honest with you, like, The Golden Bachelor seemed, now in retrospect, it seemed less bizarre than The Bachelor does to me. I don't know why, and I don't know if The Bachelorette, I'm sure, is exactly the same, right? But, like, I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, like, I know, I have friends of mine that, like, die for this show, and they absolutely love it, and, I mean, it's intriguing once you start watching it, but, like, he's, like, such a nice guy, and all these women are really nice, but it's, like, he goes in the show to think that, I mean, the whole concept of the show is just so bizarre, right, that, like, out of 22 or 26 women, his wife, his, like, soulmate is in that, I mean, how do you know, right, and then he narrows it down, and I'm, like, watching it, and I'm, like, how does he know he didn't get rid of the one person that was his soulmate, you know, just because he didn't have a one-on-one -on -one with that person or spend enough time, he, he might have let somebody go, right, so it was the hometowns, but the hometowns were, like, so quick, like, compared to the Golden Bachelor, like, on the Golden Bachelor, like, he spent time with their families, but there were only three on The Golden Bachelor. There were four. on the, So I, that's why I thought they were going to split it. They were going to, like, do two families one week and two families the next. But they did all four in one episode. And um, and then they narrowed it down to, like, the final three. I was actually kind of surprised, to be honest with you, like, who he narrowed it down to. I was happy about all three picks that he had. Um, there's one woman that I don't think is real popular with the audience. But I actually see it seems like they have a lot of fun together when they're together. Um, and he didn't seem like he really fit in with her family like he did with the other families, and she was the person that he didn't pick. I don't want to ruin it for anybody in case you haven't watched last week's episode yet, but she was the person that he didn't pick, and she's always the person that, like, at the last minute, the other women were upset about it, you could tell, because they're all standing in this, like, plane hangar, because he, like, comes, you know, in, they're gonna, whatever, and at the very last minute, she's like, Joey, can I grab you for a second? And this, when she comes back, the one woman's even, like, this Rachel girl's even, like, what did you have to talk to him about at the last minute? And she's like, oh, I'll tell you later. But anyway, she doesn't get picked, so it doesn't really matter. But I was happy with the top three that he picked. I like all of them. But through the whole thing, the trailer, they show that he basically gets left at the altar. So it's now down to these three women. I have a feeling I know who he's going to pick. I I'm just going to, like, well, I'll share it tomorrow when I, um, well, I haven't watched this week's episode, so I should share it on here. Um... Why can't I think of her name now? Daisy. I like, well, first of all, I like. I really like all three of the women that he picked. But Daisy's the one that grew up on a Christmas tree farm, and she's a cochlear device, um, and all this kind of stuff. She's had a lot of illnesses. And I have a feeling, because she's, like, not all in, I have a feeling that she might be the one that he picks, and that she is like, I can't do it at the very end, or something like that. I don't know. I really thought he would end up with Lexi, but she ended up leaving because... 
she, because of some medical issues and things like that, she's like needing to like rush the process of having kids. And so, she, and he wasn't like right on like their schedule. And so she left, but they seemed like they were really compatible to me. But anyway, the whole concept of the show is very bizarre. They do these group dates and all these women are fighting for his attention. It's just the whole thing is very bizarre. But anyway, once you start watching it, it's kind of like a train wreck. You can't stop watching. I mean, it's, it's like that. Like you just can't stop watching it. So I caught up on that last night, but I have last night's episode because it wasn't on Hulu until five in the morning. I guess Hulu puts the shows out. I, I saw it on there. It said five o'clock in the morning. But anyway, my throat is starting to hurt a little bit. You can tell I'm like starting to like slowly, like as I'm talking, lose my voice more and more and more. I'm going to do the best I can because I don't know that I'm, if I wake up tomorrow, I'm either going to wake up feeling 100% better or I'm going to be sicker than I already or have lost my voice more than I am or be sick. I hope I'm not getting sick, but it's starting to itch and like hurt a little bit. So I'm hoping that I'm like not getting sick. But anyway, then I took a nap and I took a really long nap and it was so nice. Boo Radley came up there and laid down with me while Alex was watching the show downstairs. And I took like a two and a half hour nap. It was fantastic. And that was at like, I laid down from like 9.30 to 12. And I got up and um, was just like looking through some stuff and whatever. I can't remember what I watched after that. I watched something. Who did I talk to on the phone? I feel like I, I talked to Tanya, I talked to Tanya last night on the phone for a while. Called my sponsor. She didn't answer, then she called me back, but I didn't see that she called me back because my phone was like. Oh, I was reading. I read out here for a little bit last night. So then I, because that was why my phone was inside, and then I didn't want to call her back because it was too late. Um, so then I watched one episode of Murder. I see that people keep keep on asking me what shows I'm talking about. I feel like I've said that show like nine million times. <laughs> Should I put, but I did think about this last night because I, I will get like a comment like in the vlogs and people will say like, what show did P Peter mention that he's watching? Would it be more helpful like if in the vlog, like I say, like if I'm watching a specific show to like mention another show when I'm, I, the thing is I mentioned so many movies and shows throughout the vlog that I don't know. But like right now, just to put this in perspective, okay, so I'm, I'm, there's a couple shows I'm watching. Well, obviously I list all my shows I'm watching, but that's why I couldn't keep a list like 10 shows long, right? But the show that I consistently have been talking about is called Murder Under the Friday Night Lights and it's on Max. And it's about all these mur murderers um, that have, like, some connection to football. Mostly, like, high school football, but a couple of them are college football. One's the Broncos. The, this player for the Broncos is shot and killed. Um, I watched one episode of that last night, and then I was like, I want to go in. Oh, I had, like, gone through Hulu last night when I was looking to see when The Bachelor came out, and I, like, added all these shows to my list. And there's this one show, and it's called Southern Gothic. It's only, there's only one season out. Well, at least there's only one season on Hulu that's out. And, um, it's about murders that take place in small southern towns. And so I was like, oh, this is like totally up my alley. But I thought it was going to be real cheesy. You know, it's interesting because I didn't really like these shows that were like series where, I've, I've shared that song here before, where each episode is completely different. It's like podcasts. Like, I don't like podcasts like that either. I like to watch like a six-part documentary where you can really get into it, you know? But like all of a sudden, I'm like watching these series that are like each episode is different and I really like it. Somebody commented on my vlog and told me that I should watch, it's called The Mean Girl Murders. I actually, I don't even know when that was. It might have been when Alex and I went to San Diego for the wedding, but I started watching it. I watched like the first three episodes, I think because one of them took place in Indiana or something like that. Um, I think there was like two or three seasons out. I did start watching that. I didn't think it was fantastic. It wasn't horrible by any means. I remember the one that I watched, I don't know why this one stands out to me. But the girl went to the party. The other girl got the girl to come to the party. And then something happened at the party and the girl was killed. And then, like, they went to go try to find the girl, but she had moved, like, another state. It would happen, like, 20 years ago. And she had moved, like, another state. And they went there and interviewed her. And she and, like, somebody else ended up getting prosecuted, like, 20 years later. Do you guys know which one I'm talking about? I guess it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I just didn't, I don't know, like, to watch each one in a row was kind of like, there was a lot. There was one about... These women that all went to this biker bar 
That was like the first one, I feel like. I watched like three or four episodes of that, The Mean Girl Murders. It was okay. But that was during that period that I didn't like to watch a series. If I went back and watched it now, I'd probably love it and sing its praises, you know, because my opinion changes all the time. So anyway, I started watching this Southern Gothic last night. It's on Hulu. You guys, it is so good. Each episode is so good and very scary. Um... And I, well, I was going to watch a show called the, A Haunting because a couple people have recommended this to me about paranormal things, but only the 10th and the 11th season is out. And I think it's on, I, when I looked it up, it was on Max. So I started watching a show called Southern Gothic last night. Y'all know I love the stuff to do with the South anyway. And it was like the, each one of these was a small town. The last one that I watched was about Morris, Alabama. And it was this guy that was killed and he was shot and his wife like came home and, and like thought somebody had like robbed their house and they were real involved in their church. It was all about, I mean, this town was really, really small and it happened right across from the police station. That one was really interesting. Now I'm like, I can't remember any of them that I watch. Oh, there was one about three kids. This happened in the late seventies and they went out to this lake. I watched three of them, didn't I? Oh, here's my friend from the pool. Hey, you ready for the pool to open? Are you ready for the pool to open? I am, I am. I'm so ready. Um, she's so sweet. She's my friend who, um, her daughter, so she has a daughter that is a lesbian and is married and had a son. And then the they had another son. I, I haven't seen them since they had their second son. I think it was in November or something like that. And so they always come to the pool a lot and they bring they bring their son. He's like five or six now or something like that. But they bring him and he like is this like avid swimmer and diver and stuff like that. And her daughter is so sweet. And when I started talking to her, I was like, we like knew all these people in common. She's like 10 years younger than me, but we like knew like all these people in common. It was so crazy and then I got to know her mom really well because like her mom comes to the pool like every day like I do and her mom is really really sweet and so she's one of my friends from the pool I love her so anyway um, she's so funny she's like a couple of these women do this but not many of them um, she and like her friend in the neighborhood which I thought used to live I thought she lived over here but she actually lives over here she and her friend they bring this cooler to the pool every day right and um, they're so funny because they're like 75 or 80 or something like that. But like really active, like 75, 80 year olds, right? And like every time they're up at the pool, like each of them, like you can tell they're like best friends. And they met in this neighborhood and they're like, should we have another beer? And they like get out and they pop these beers in their cooler. I live for it. I love it so much. And then they bring that like the beer can into the pool, right? Like they have these like tall, like the PBR ones, you know? And they're drinking these like tall PBRs. And they're like, so what, what should we do for dinner tonight? And this, she'll, she's always like making homemade pizza. She's like, well, I'm thinking about making a homemade pizza. Do you want to come over? And she's like, they're like, yeah. My mom would have loved that. My mom, if she lived in here, if she had had friends like that, she would have loved that. She's like, yeah, let's make homemade pizzas and we can watch like a movie or something. She's like, okay, because they live like right next to each other. Like, would that be so perfect? Like, my mom would love that. That's why like a lot of the people that live in here are like the same age, you know? I love that. I, I miss, I'm so ready for spring and summer to be like talking to my neighbors and stuff like that. But when I, the summer, because I said something to them one day, I was like, how, you guys are like, how'd you guys, have you guys known each other for years? And they're like, no, we just met in the neighborhood. We were walking one day or something like that. And they live like real close to each other. And they're like, they've become like best friends. Isn't that so cute? I love that. But they always bring a cool, cooler with beer up there. <laughs> and some of the beer is like flavored. Cause like one of them will be like, well, I got this new kind of like beer. They call it something else. They don't call it beer though. What do they call it? Not like spirits. It's not something old time in it. They call it. It's come something that like if you didn't like if you weren't looking you wouldn't think it was beer they call it something and but anyway she's like i got this new one it's like look pear flavor or peach flavor she's like ooh, that sounds good i think i'll try that and she tries it they're like in their buzz on at the pool i love it it makes me so happy and they're up there like the whole day they like read and they'll like go and get something for lunch they'll like make fruit salad and bring it back and stuff like that they're so sweet i love my women from the pool i cannot wait till the summer to go to the pool so anyway um, so yeah, so I watched Southern Gothic. So the one was about this guy named Animal that was like investigated for killing. There was like these three kids that went to this lake in this small town. Oh, I remember what the third one was. So that was the first one that I watched. <clears throat> and it was another small town. And this guy that was like wild looking, he like broke out of prison or out of jail and everything and took this woman hostage. Like this story was crazy. These stories are so well investigated and they're so crazy. The second one was about this woman that was dating this guy 
and they found her like this delivery so she her car they found her car next to like this gas station like the shell gas station and she was like in her car like sitting up like this and this delivery truck like came up behind her like in the morning and was like honking at her like to move because he needed to put his deliveries to the gas station and he got out of his car and she was just like sitting like this he didn't even know she was dead and she'd been like shot in the head and all this kind of stuff it was horrible oh my god it was so horrible and she had all these siblings and kids and they shared the whole story when you find out like oh my god like the connection because they always know like the police right away are always like first of all the woman that was the sheriff reminded me of Jodie Foster on True Detective. The woman that was the, detec the sheriff detective in the last one about the church. The people that were all involved in this Baptist church and all this kind of stuff. And, um, it was so crazy to watch. I mean, when you watch these people, like, on the stand, like, this woman thought it would be, like, better because she didn't believe in divorce. And, like, this guy's sister is, like, she didn't believe in divorce, so she thought that it would be more acceptable to murder my brother than to divorce him when he had already been divorced once. She's like, he can handle being divorced. But she's like, yeah, my family doesn't believe in divorce. So she killed this guy. I mean, it's unbelievable. This police detective, she was so good, the sheriff. And, um, and it was so sad because, like, all these people, they were talking about this small town and, like, how everybody in these small towns in Alabama or whatever, I don't know, the South, like, they always go to church on, like, Wednesday nights and then, like, all day Sunday and Sunday night. And, um, like, their whole town is, like, I mean, it's a small town. And there's, like, five churches. And, like, everybody goes to church on Wednesdays and Sundays. And then they were talking about Milo, or uh, they were talking about the Piggly Wiggly versus Publix. And this was so interesting, okay, how the police detective figured it out. So, they went to this place called Milo's. I don't know if you're from the South, you probably know what I'm talking about. And it's, like, a cheeseburger place, like McDonald's, but local to the South. And so there's a bag like so she goes into the house and she's like they've gone through milo's on the way home from church and when she gets home she puts the food inside and she's like i'm gonna run to the grocery store really quick to get your lunch meat for tomorrow and um this is how they figured it out this is a, this is the shit that I live for, okay? Because this is where I could be a detective. No true story, I could. And so she's like, I'm gonna... This is what she tells the police. She's like, I put the food inside the Milo's. And, like, I told him I would be back. Like, I was just going to the grocery store real quick to get his lunch meat so I could make his sandwiches for work the next day. And so, because, like, she would make his lunch and then he would take her to work and drop her off and then he would go to work and then he'd pick her up after work. And so she put the, the Milo's inside and it was uneaten. It was untouched. Well, the police detectives were like, okay, the one thing about Milo's is, like, you have to eat the fries when they're hot. Like, the fries are fantastic, but if you let them get cold, they're horrible. And nobody's, nobody eats Milo's fries cold. And so they wouldn't just let the food sit there. They would have eaten it first before she went to the grocery store. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, this is how my mind thinks. Like, this is how I think, right? And then the dad, okay, because she, she, she goes to the Piggly Wiggly, and they interview the dad, and the dad's like, his favorite lunch meat, his favorite, uh, you know, like, turkey and ham was boar's head, and Publix sells boar's head. Piggly Wiggly doesn't sell boar's head. So when she said she went to the pig, she said she went to the pig. She didn't even call it the Piggly Wiggly. She said she went to the pig. So when she went to the pig, that was a lot, even though she had a receipt from there. If she was really buying lunch meat for her husband, she would have had to have gone to Publix, but Publix is right across from Milo's, so why wouldn't they have just stopped at Publix on the way home because they went to Milo's? That's how they figured out the case. I'm like, oh my God, this is totally my detective work. This is like a cozy mystery. I mean, no, seriously though, like they able to figure all this stuff out. And then it's like, they think it's these contractors, but the contractors are at church at Bible study on a Wednesday because the whole town goes to Bible study on Wednesday to different churches. And so, like, they interview all these contractors that work for this company, and they're all at different churches on this Wednesday night. And so the church, you know, collaborates her story and all this kind of stuff. And then, oh, my God, this, I'm not even telling you, like, the meat and potatoes of the story because I don't want to ruin it for anybody. But, like, when you find out, like, who did it and how it was done, because it's not just one person, it's, like, crazy town. I'm, so I'm loving that Southern uh, Southern uh, Gothic. I've got three ep episodes left, and then there's another series on Hulu called Missing, and it's just about missing people cases, which y'all know I'm real intrigued with those. So I think I'm gonna watch that too. Somebody commented on my vlog last night and said that they're living for the 50, 50 minute to an hour long vlogs. I, that, thank you so much for saying that. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to make them longer. You know, when I was driving, they were like an hour and a half like every day. 
the thing is, is like, I mean, I could stay here and talk for two hours, but at some point it kind of feels like, I feel like I'm boring you guys, but just talking about random stuff, you know? And there becomes a point where I'm just kind of like, I can't sit in this chair anymore. It's one thing when you're like driving around. My leg is so dry and so itchy. It's one thing when you're like driving around, you know, and you're like looking at this and looking at that and whatever, you know? But it's a different thing when you're just like sitting in a chair like this, <laughs> telling stories, you know? I mean, I love it. I actually prefer this than before when I was driving, but, um... I don't know how I did such long vlogs sitting in the driveway during the lockdown when I was doing uh, the driveway vlogs. I don't know how I just sat in the car for so long. I can remember sitting out there because Alex would be watching TV. I would sit in the car and I would listen to like two and three hours. I was like booming through audiobooks back then. I would listen to like two and three hours of an audiobook and I would play words with friends the whole time. Somebody just, I, I said this in my drama video that I did it, but somebody like just sent me a, a DM on Twitter and they were like, well this, not just, but like two weeks ago. And they were like, are you playing Words With Friends? Because like your picture is on Words With Friends. I was like, and they like sent me a screenshot of it and all this kind of stuff. And they were like, they said to the person something like, are you Peter Mont? I can't remember if the person responded, but I was like, no, that's not me. I'm sorry. I was like, I haven't played Words With Friends since the lockdown. I haven't. Like... As soon as the lockdown lifted, I stopped playing Words With Friends, but I loved it during that. But here was the thing that was the problem with Words With Friends, is I think so many people were playing at that point. And I, like, had however many, the max amount of games you can play. Because I told people in the vlogs, if you guys remember, I told them, I was like, I'm playing Words With Friends. So everybody found me, and so everybody would start games with me. And so I had, like... 60 games going or however many was the max at the same so I would literally just go play 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 to the point where I was like I don't even care if I get like bad words you know like not bad words but like missed words or whatever and I was just like playing it through but like as soon as I would like finish like three games like five new games would pop up like people had like answered their part of it so it wasn't like I just had like three or four people going it was it was fun but it was like so hard to keep up with it I would like wake up and I would have, like, all these games I had to, like, keep on. Because I would try to, like, before I went to bed, like, finish the games and not start a new one. But, like, as soon as I finished it, somebody would start a new one, you know? So it was really, really hard to do. Um, <laughs> do you guys want to hear kind of, okay, this is kind of a shady story. But, well, it's not a shady story, but it's kind of an interesting story. So there was this guy in Indianapolis, and his name was Tim Durham. You can look him up. He was super, super wealthy. Well, the way that he was super wealthy was that he did this Ponzi scheme, okay? I think he's in a federal prison for it now. But anyway, we knew Tim Durham through other people and um, had, like, gone to set. He had had this party, like, right before we met him. So he was really interested. He wanted to date our friend. He's probably like 10 or 15 years older than me. And he wanted to date our friend, Brittany, the one that married us. And so that, I'll never forget that day we met. It was like Alex and I had just been dating for like a year or two or something like that, a year maybe. And he was at this place, Bella Vita, that used to be this restaurant here in town. They used to have this party on Sundays called Rehab. It was like very similar to the party in, um, I think it was at the Hard Rock in Las Vegas called Rehab. It was like the day, like on Sundays, you know, like the day after Saturday night of going out all night long. And it was this thing that they think, well, he would come to it and he was like real interested. And so he had, he was very quiet. I remember he was like real good looking guy for being like, I don't know, at that point he would have been, he's gotta be older than that. He would have been like 55 or something like that. He was an older guy, very good looking, very quiet though, very like subdued. And he would just like sit there. He'd have like a section. He'd have like all these like beautiful people around him, right? And I remember, like, he came over to us and introduced himself to us and was like, you know, like, I, get, I see you guys everywhere and, you know, whatever. That was when we were going out a lot. And introduced himself to Brittany. And he was like, I want to show you my car that I just got. And he had refurbished. It was, like, a 1940s Mercedes. It was, like, unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it before. Well, he had had this Christmas party. And I think, like, Ludacris or somebody came and, like, played at this Christmas party. And he had actual, like, reindeer inside his house. And he had, like, snow, like, brought in for the front yard. And all. It was, like, this unbelievable party and all this kind of stuff. Well, he ended up getting arrested, like, shortly after we met him. Like, six months after we met him or something like that, he got arrested for this Ponzi scheme. Do you guys know what a Ponzi scheme is? So, anyway, he was apparently taking money, allegedly, allegedly, 
he, the, the person that we knew was like his assistant. That's how we met him, was this guy that was like his assistant that we knew because he dated a friend of ours. So, because he collected like sports memorabilia and all this kind of stuff. There's so much shady that like went down after this little story. I didn't really, I mean, I met him like two times or something like that. But for some reason, he remembered me. I don't know why. Because I, um, so he was indicted on federal charges for this Ponzi scheme. And it was like a huge deal. And like while the trial was going on, he was like on house monitor. He couldn't leave his house or something like that. But anyway, at that time was when I started playing Words with Friends. And it was interesting because the battery stopped right when I was getting to the good part. So I had this friend of mine, this sober friend of mine, and she had gotten divorced, right? And so she was meeting these people in recovery, these guys that like, you know, had been sober for a while and she thought was attractive. And they would play dirty words with friends. I gotta call her up and tell. I'm gonna call her up and I'm gonna be like, girl, do you remember when you used to play dirty words with friends? So she had like two or three guys that she was like, like, like they were like hitting on her and stuff like that. And I mean, it was real innocent. I mean, they had both, all of them been sober for enough time that you, you can date whoever you want to date. But anyway, but they would play like words with friends, but it would be like dirty words with friends. It was like, that's like, it was like subtle, innocent flirting, right? And so she told me about that and I was like, I don't think I knew what Words With Friends was or something like that. And I was like, what's Words With Friends? She's like, oh my God, it's like Scrabble, but online, you gotta get it, I'll play it with you. And so I got it to play it with her, right? Well, all of a sudden I'm playing it one day and I get this request from this Tim Durham guy, right? So I'm playing <laughs> Words With Friends with Tim Durham, but I'm like real interested in what's going on with the case because at that point we didn't know like what he had gotten. Like we didn't, like the, there was all these articles like in the Indianapolis Business Journal and people were speculating, but they didn't know. He was like stealing money from elderly people. It was like horrible, okay? Like it was horrible. And I remember like I was playing like Words With Friends with him and he was like on house arrest or something like that. He was like, yeah, I'm like on house arrest. Like, and like your name came up on here or something. I don't know how he found me on Words With Friends, but like we would talk because you can like talk to people on Words With Friends. I'm not on Words With Friends anymore. Don't try to friend me on there. I haven't picked it up since the lockdown. I still got it downloaded, but I haven't been on there forever. So anyway, this is such a bizarre story. I don't even know why I'm telling it. So anyway, one day it was like when the article broke. Like I think the article was in the Indianapolis Business Journal or whatever. And I talked about what the Ponzi scheme was. And I read the article and I was like, I cannot, I was like, I cannot play words with friends with this man anymore. He stole all this money from these elderly people. It was so sad. But anyway, that was the last time I ever talked to him. I ended the game and just was like, I was like, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you anymore. And I ended the game. And I haven't talked to him since. I know somebody's gonna be like, that was so mean that you just stopped talking to him. I'm not, no, he was stealing. Listen, this man, he had, this man had more money than God, okay? And he was stealing money from like elderly people. Having them like cash in their retirement, stuff like that. It was a Ponzi scheme. Do you guys know what that is? Look up a Ponzi scheme. I think he's sitting in a federal prison. I don't have my, my phone's uploaded in my drama video, so I don't have it out here. But I should look and see if, I don't even know. That was like, if Alex, I mean, that was like 15, 14, 15 years ago that that happened. But I used to tell, I remember telling Alex, I was like, because we never did get invited. He always had these extravagant Christmas parties. And I was like, we never got, I want, I'd like to see a reindeer at a Christmas party. <laughs> oh, thank God my friend missed that one. She didn't end up dating him. But he dated some friend of ours for a long time. Well, some girl that we knew, like an acquaintance. She had all these gorgeous tattoos all over. I remember seeing her there at that thing. We only did that rehab thing for like two years or whatever, and then I think it closed down. God, that feels like so long ago. Well, it would have been, I mean, I would have been 37 or 38, and I'm 51 now. God, that seems like so long ago. I had totally forgotten about that. It's always talking about words with friends. I had totally forgotten about him and everything. His assistant like moved out of town and moved somewhere else, and yeah, I don't know what happened to all that. Listen to those birds. Aren't those birds so pretty? I love just like listening to the sounds in the neighborhood. Like the dogs barking. It was so funny because when I got up today, I took Boo Radley out and he was like running around. He's like, he like trots. Caroline calls it trotting. It's like he trots and then he'll like go, he just puts his head up. Well, I came inside and I was giving him treats and my neighbor next door, the Bass and Hound Beagle, 
he just stands in the backyard, okay? The dog is so sweet, but he's dumb as a box of rocks, okay? And they know it, too, because they say the same thing. But he just barks, stands in the backyard, and he just barks. He's like, oh, and he howls, okay? Well, my neighbor next door, she's, like, working on her patio, and she's, like, getting her patio ready for spring. <laughs> And she's out there, and she's like, shut up! And he's like, oh! And she's like, shut up! And But I can hear my neighbors. I can hear them coming outside to pull him inside. And they're laughing. They think it's funny. <laughs> they're, like, laughing. <laughs> and I'm laughing inside. And Boo Rowley is completely clueless that this dog is howling. The dog's like, oh! And I hear them out there going, come on in, come on inside. And she's like, shut up! Okay. It reminds me of that scene in Rear Window when he's like looking at everybody like their apartments from behind and he's like seeing what everybody's doing and they're all yelling at each other and stuff like that. Totally reminds me of that. I love this neighborhood so much. She runs in the mini marathon with her mom every year. I think her mom walks it and she runs it. She usually walks every day, but she just ran because the mini marathon I think is, it's right before the 500 or like the week or two before the 500 I think so she trains for it every year I should do that don't you think I should but I'm not going to for this year <laughs> well I'm not putting that out there okay I'm not doing the mini marathon I'm not putting that out there but I sh I should some year that's how my dad my dad actually my stepmom used to run marathons and that's how they got started was with the mini marathon it's like three miles or something like that so anyway she runs is this her coming back right now nope this is a mother and daughter they're running, though. They're probably training for the mini-marathon. You see people run all over Indianapolis during this time of year because they're all training for the mini-marathon. They like, speed walk in it or run it. It's real, I don't know how many miles it is. Maybe it's more than three miles. Maybe it's like... I don't know what it is, but it's shorter than a marathon. That's why they call it the mini-marathon. But a lot of people in Indianapolis do it. And it's like, you know... There's also the... Uh, the Thanksgiving one. The something dash. What's it called? The turkey dash or... The drumstick dash. That's what it's called. A lot of people do that too, but it's real cold outside. That's more for like, you know, real runners. We actually have a friend, these two friends of ours, is, well, obviously they're a couple, a married couple. They were at our wedding and then we were at their wedding. They actually got engaged in front of the Bellagio the day after we got married. And then we they, they got married the following year. We were in their wedding. And, um, but they do, well, he started doing Ironmans like years ago. And then she started doing marathon running, and now they do marathon, like legit marathons, like all over the year, the world, like the Boston. I think they like, I think you have to like apply for that and whatever they did, like the Boston Marathon, the New York Marathon. They've done all those things, but they go to places like Chile and like I mean, in India, and like they go do these. I mean, most obscure marathons, and then they go and they stay in those places for like ten days, and they but they do the marathon. Like they go there, like two days before the marathon, they do the marathon, and they like go there and whatever. So, yeah, so they're always going on those trips. But a lot of people in Indianapolis run the mini marathon right before the 500. My sponsor, when I was talking to her last, said something about it be like race season has started. I was like, already? She's obsessed. My sponsor is obsessed with cars, like race cars. She like has a, like, she has like a, <laughs> what do I call it? I was going to call it speed racer. She has like a sports car, like a sports car. Sport. Like if you pulled up here, you would think it was like, I mean, it sounds like a race car and all that. Cause she loves cars and she goes to the track like every day in May. She gets her pass and she goes down there and talks to all the, the drivers and stuff. She loves the track. It's like her favorite time of year. And she loves to go to the race and all that kind of stuff. She's like obsessed with cars. And so she was so excited because she's like race season starting. I don't even know what that, what that means. I guess race season starts in like March and April. I didn't know that, but anyway. But the mini marathon, a lot of people run it. My dad and my stepmom, that's actually how they like, like one of the first things they did together. Like when they first started dating was the mini marathon. And then they started running a lot of like marathons after that. Not like necessarily always full marathons. If they would go places and run marathons, they were like avid runners for a long, long time. And, um, and then, um, so then my neighbor, she did a mini marathon last year and she's doing, I asked her if she's doing it again this year. She's like, yeah, I'm training for it right now. So she like runs, whatever. You can walk it. Like a lot of people walk the mini marathon. They don't run it. Do you guys hear it? Like my voice is like getting even worse. Um, like in this moment, like I don't feel horrible, but my throat is itching a little bit. Now I'm like, oh, I want to go for a walk and listen to my books. I haven't listened. I didn't listen to the firm I read last. Well, I listened. 
listened to a little bit while I was cleaning up some stuff, but I read, I came out here and read last night. I didn't really listen to tons of it. So anyway, isn't it so crazy to think that I used to run like every day for a couple years? Well, two, well, two different times for a couple years, and I would run every single day, like five to seven miles. Like, and when it was cold on the treadmill and when it was nice outside. There's another runner right there. I used to run like every single day. I loved it. I would run like, I would hit like two miles and then, and I was not a fast runner at all. Like towards the end I was a little bit faster, but like I was a slow runner. But I would hit like the two mile mark and then I just would like, my endorphins would kick in. And I like at that point, if you've ever ran like, if you run like avidly like every day every other day if you know what i'm talking about you run like anywhere from like two to like 10 miles like there's a point where like a mile and a half two miles that you could have you could just run like 20 miles like it just you feel like it's just like the endorphins kick in and i think that's why but i ran like because i had it like all like you know like on the treadmill i would like run like five miles but then like outside i had it mapped what five to seven miles was in my old apartment and i would run that and i loved it i loved running back in the day um I want to kind of like work the walking into like starting to run and things like that. There's always like programs that are like walk to run, but I feel like I already know how to do that. Um, so yeah, I'll try to do that. <laughs> no, that is my goal. I was telling Alex that the other night, like this summer, like towards the beginning of the summer, I would like to like start, even if I just like, like let's say if I walk for like an hour, if like, even like I start with like five or 10 minutes running and then move that up, you know, to the point where I could like maybe like run for like a half an hour or whatever. But I used to love to run. Oh my God, I loved it. Which is so crazy. Cause I just like in high school and stuff like that, whenever we had to run, like I hated it, but it's different when nobody's telling you to do it. You know what I mean? So tonight, I'm gonna watch, well, we have Vanderpump Rules comes on tonight. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna watch that or not, or if we're gonna save it. And then I have um, The Bachelor, which I'm gonna watch. And then I'm gonna watch the last, well, hopefully I'm gonna watch the last three episodes of Southern Gothic. And then go back to uh, Murder on Friday Night Lights and go back because I've got one more season of that. One more season and one episode from the second, one episode from the second season, I think. And one more, and then one season, the third season, and then I'm done with that. So i um, probably finish that sometime this week and then listen to my audiobook and read a little bit. I don't want to like start like three or four books at the same time though. Like I'm listening to this audiobook, I'm reading like the fangirl manga and I'm reading this other graphic novel that just like a little bit here and there and then I'm reading two short story books I don't want to start anything else until I've like finished those well I mean obviously if I finish the audiobook then I'll start another audiobook but I don't want to start like another like physical copy book until I finish those you know what I mean so My neighbor's car has been in their driveway all day long, which is like not typical. I heard them getting their dog in from outside out back like I was telling you guys earlier, but like I haven't seen them out front all day today. I haven't really seen, other than her running, I have, and she took her dog for a walk earlier. I haven't really seen any of my neighbors out here. I saw like right before I came out and vlogged, I saw my neighbor across the street. She came out and got her mail, um, but yeah. And then I have therapy tomorrow because Caroline could do, only could do Cousin Fun Day. She texted me, she's reading The Housemaid. She's like, I'm loving The Housemaid. She's reading The Housemaid. But she could um, only do Cousin Fun Day on Thursday. I think we're gonna go get a pedicure. She's gonna come pick me up earlier, like at 11. I was like, because we've been talking about getting pedicures for like three months now, we haven't done it. I was like, I really want to get a pedicure. So I think we're going to get a pedicure, get coffee, and then get, or fountain pops, and then get one or the other, and then get pedicures on, and then run errands. But I made my list like, oh, see? This is what I'll start doing. I'll just go like this. I need to trim that nail down before it splits. On my big toenail, when we were in Mexico, I did that, like I stubbed it. And you know, like when you stub it and it like, it just kind of like blemishes over, but it's like you don't like trim it down. So it like went way down and it's just now back to like normal. Like it took me from 
well, I guess that was like January 1st until like March 1st, so two months, for my nail to grow out where it's normal again. I was like afraid I was gonna lose my nail. Here comes my neighbor coming back from running. She's carrying a big bottle of water with her while she runs. I, could, that's, I couldn't do that. I think it's a bottle of water. Watch, I'm gonna root her on as she comes by. If she looks over, I'm gonna go, yay! Or maybe she was gonna turn the other way because I don't see her coming. She should be here by now. Did she go the other way towards the pool? <laughs> Where's she at? She should be here by now. She's coming down the street. But yeah, I'm gonna have to go in and I'm gonna have to trim this nail. I think part of it too is like, like, I was thinking this last night, like with my throat and stuff like that. Like I've been like, oh here's, oh no, that's the other guy running. I've been like in a lot of dust, like going through the books, the bookshelves, like dusting off the bookshelves, cleaning out these like dusty areas. Like I've been in a lot of dust. Like I don't know if that isn't maybe like affecting my like throat a little bit. Like that could be it. Um, another walker. There's so many people walking out today, but um. Like, when I get done with vlogging at the end of the day, I'm not gonna film my Peter Rosemans video today. I was gonna maybe gonna do that, but I don't, I think I'm just gonna like rest my voice. When I get done vlogging, I get done with all my videos. I then, um, I go into like, I, I don't plan on it, but I go into cleaning it. It's not like just like cleaning for like an hour. It's like two, three, four hours, right? And I just get so into it. But like, I'm around all this like old stuff that's like dusty and whatever, you know? That might be doing a little bit. I was thinking she went down to the pool and did a lap back around. So before I got off the vlog, I was going to, here she comes, here she comes. She can do it, there she goes. <laughs> She's not even looking at me. <laughs> anyway, well, for any of you out there, you can do it, you can do it. Put your money to it. <laughs> I'm gonna go inside. I can tell that my husband already ate his Chipotle because I could hear him in there watching TV and then he came to the sink and cleaned everything up, so. It feels like Thursday or Friday. It doesn't feel like Tuesday, which is interesting to me. Tanya's been like, well, she was out of town and then like Tuesday nights are not good for her, her to like go to meetings as much anymore, so we haven't been able to go to our home group. And so we've been trying like different meetings. I think we're gonna go to a meeting um, Friday or Saturday is our plan for this week, so. I just heard her go, ah. Oh. Do you hear her laughing? She's talking to somebody. What I don't understand is people that run while they talk on the phone. Well, they usually talk on their, like, the Bluetooth or whatever. I can understand walking, but, like, running, I couldn't do that. I have a hard time even doing it. I was, who did I call? I called Tanya one night while I was walking, and I called my friend Nikki, but I only talked to both of them for, like, three minutes, because I was like, I thought, oh, I can, like, have conversations while I'm walking. I can't do it. Like, I can't at all. And I love listening to my audiobooks and getting so into it. See, this is why I want to take a walk tonight, because I want to listen to my audiobook and get real into the firm again. I only have, like, four hours. I have less than four hours left. I got to get it done. I got to get it done. Because before uh, we go on vacation, I want to get the firm done, the exchange done, and the True Crime Book Club done. I don't want those, like, hanging over my head. Can you do? I believe I did a book haul today? I can't even believe I did a book haul. I'm so excited about it. All these books. I'm excited to sit out here all spring and summer and read and watch shows and talk to my neighbors and stuff. All right, you guys, listen. I got to get off here now because I'm, like, afraid if I keep on talking, I'm going to push my voice too much. So I'm going to get off here. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Tuesday. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Real short outro today. I love you guys so much. Treat yourselves with kindness. Love yourselves more. Be good to yourselves. Whatever you're going through right now, it's it's gonna it's gonna get better. I promise you, it will. Um, I love you guys so much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you. <laughs>